All right, good, good uh, afternoon. Turn, turn your Bible, if you would, to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. And I'm going to preach to you this afternoon on the subject of Bible memory as a life choice. Bible memory as a life choice, Romans chapter 12. Uh, and before I read the uh, text uh, for this morning, just by way of introduction, um, Dr. Ruckman said uh, in his commentary on the book of Psalms, volume 2, page 945, Scripture memorization is a lost art in most fundamental churches, and as for unsaved educators in America are concerned, they are as ignorant and unenlightened about the Scripture as the Pope and the College of Cardinals. So the world doesn't know anything, and the church churches, the best churches, don't really know uh, that much more. Um, when it comes to the subject of memorizing the Bible, now you may know doctrine, you may know the fundamentals, so-called fundamentals of the faith, you may know uh, the mysteries of the church, of the the mysteries of God, of the kingdom of God. Um, you may know about dispensational salvation. You may know about the second coming. You may know about the uh, translation of the church. You may know about the appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. You may know about uh, eternity. You may know about the gap. You may know about the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. You may know about all the stories in the Old Testament uh, because you heard people relate them to you in the Old Test in, uh, in church or from your parents when you were growing up or whatever it was. Um, but the Bible commands us to memorize Scripture, not just independently, as it's something good to do, but as a matter of, of the mechanism that allows you to take these words that you find in this page and be faithful in putting them into, the pra into practice in your day-to-day -day life. So we're going to look at a few things about that this morning. Uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Dear God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for Jesus Christ and the precious blood that he shed. I thank you for all that you've done for us. Uh, forgive us for falling short day by day. Give us the strength, Lord, to to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh, to be transformed and not conform to the world, um, and to memorize the Word of God. Help us, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, now the Bible says in verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the way to prove God's will for your life is to renew your mind instead of uh, letting your mind think the way that it thought before. Uh, instead of letting your mind just go about according to the spirit and the general tendency of the age. Uh, you know, like these days, there's a general tendency that uh, uh, that allows homosexuality, and that is wicked and evil. That allows uh, transgender and sex change operation, and that is wicked and evil. Uh, God, in the beginning, made them male and female. Um, and you don't get to switch, and you don't get to choose. You are what God made you. And you can try to change and you can not conform to societal constructs all you want to. Um, but you're still a male or a female according to what God made you in the beginning. Amen. Not only in the beginning with Adam and Eve, but also in the beginning of your life when you were born. You're one or the other. You're not both. And you don't get to choose. And there's no other designations. You know, like nowadays they got 200 something plus classifications of what you can uh, say that you are as a as a gender preference, uh, but that doesn't make you uh, anything different than what God made you. Uh, you're either a man or a woman, and maybe you're not much of a man or much of a woman, 
but you're certainly not a tree fairy. Amen. Man or woman. And and uh, some of you getting your hairs in your back, your little head are getting standing up, and you're getting prickly and rebellious and mad uh, because that's not the tendency of the world. Because the general sensibility of the world today is to prove with science and to forbid by law any teaching contrary that homosexuality and transgenderism, transgenderism or whatever they're calling it, is wicked and evil. And that the, according to the Bible, you are what you, you were born uh, when it comes to male and female. And that's an example of be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you say, well, I'm not conformed to them because I'm not changing my gender. Yeah, but you're allowing that they can, they should be allowed to in your mind. You're allowing that that's legitimate in some sense, in some cases, in your mind. See? It's the way that you think is what we're after here, is what the Bible says. Pay attention to the words now, but be transformed. How? Transform your body? No. Transform your heart and soul? No. In this instance here in verse 2, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So you're meant to change the way that you think. Let that be renewed according to what the Bible says. And that means a steady diet of truth. And there's only one source of that, my friend. And it's not me. <laughs> it's the words of the King James Bible. Amen. So you might get mad at me sometimes for my, uh, you know, extreme views or the way that I talk about these things and my sharpness uh, and my hatred of evil things like homosexuality. And we're going to get when we're in studying Romans, we'll get to uh, abhor that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. And see, you've got to, in your mind, think, understand what's good and what's evil according to what God says is good and evil. Not according to the world, because they've turned it on its head. And even before they did that, your instructions are to hold fast the form of sound words, which thou hast heard of me. Not uh, go off according to the world. Not be, Not think the same way that you thought your whole life growing up, because that's what you were taught by your parents, because that's what the people around you thought. Or because that's the natural opinion that you developed in your flesh, contrary to the Word of God. You're meant to change your mind in every one of these matters to be conform transformed uh, according to the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right. Now, the reason why I bring that up is because Bible memory uh, is the me, the primary means of doing that. The Bible says in Psalm 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. When we studied in Romans, we studied Romans chapter 6, chapter 7, and chapter 8, and how that you're not supposed to present your body as members, as instruments of unrighteousness to sin, but you're supposed to prevent your, present your bodies as mem members, as instruments of righteousness unto God. And the way that you do that... Uh, the way that you keep from sin, the way that you remind yourself, because sometimes you just forget. You forget that you're not supposed to look at things, certain things. You forget that you're not supposed to think about things in a certain way. You forget that you're not supposed to be talking that way. And you just go ahead and do it because you're not thinking about it. And the reason why you're not thinking about it is because you don't remember the words. And you don't remember the words because you didn't hide them in your heart. You didn't memorize them. You're not thinking about them as you go through your day. You just you think it's like a test. Like uh, you know, my uh, my husband made me memorize these verses so I can quote them, and now look, I can quote them. Big deal. And you don't spend any time meditating on them and thinking about them and trying as hard as you can every hour of the day to put them into practice, so that when you're in a conversation at work and uh, they want you to go do some, go with them and do something that you should, you know you shouldn't do according to the New Testament and the Word of God. You should remember the words, but when sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Uh, when your family and friends and your uh, people that you fellowship with decide to go uh, get drunk at a party or do something, you should remember the words. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. 
You should remember those words and put them into practice. You should obey them. And the reason why some of you don't want to memorize scripture is so that you don't have to remember to do those things because they're uncomfortable for you because you're not because con- you're conformed to this world and not transformed by the renewing of your mind. See, you need to make yourself comfortable doing God's will. Let that be your reality. And uh, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. And the only way for the words to gain entrance in unto you, to be hidden in your heart, to stay there so that you remember them, is to memorize them. And I'm talking to you more about just memorize them so you can quote them on the test. I'm talking to you about Bible memory as a life choice, as a means of fulfilling the rest of what you're supposed to be doing as a Christian. See? Now, I'm not saying you can't ever have fun or you can't go to an amusement park or you can't do this or whatever, or hiking or whatever it is that you do in your spare time. You absolutely should do those things. But your mind should be transformed by the renewing of, uh, ye should be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And, uh, turn to Titus 3. Titus 3. Again, as a ministry of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Titus chapter 3. And look down in verse, Five, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Lord, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. See? But see this renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior? That has to do with the renewing of your mind. So it's part of the ministry of the Holy Ghost to renew your mind. But you can quench the Spirit. You can not listen to it. You can put it away. You can't get rid of it. But you can quench it. The Bible says, quench not the Spirit. Uh, over there in Ephesians. Alright, turn to Isaiah 26. Isaiah 26. Um, Bible memory as a life choice. As a Christian, it is meant to be the mechanism or one of the me- main mechanisms uh, that and all the other things, prayer and fellowship and Bible, we seek you out the book of Lord and read. But it is a primary means of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, Isaiah 26 and look down in verse uh, 3. Actually start in verse 1. And that day shall this song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open ye the gates, that the righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusted in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. All right, now you memorize those words. And you remind yourself each day that God keeping you in perfect peace is dependent on you keeping your mind stayed on him and trusting in him. See? But if you forget the words, you put them aside, you don't remind yourself, you don't remember them, you don't memorize them. And I'm not just talking about Tom, Dick, and Harry uh, zippity doo dah on a way your, your way through the Romans road. I'm talking about memorizing the Pauline epistles in the New Testament. I'm talking about memorizing the book of Psalms. I'm talking about memorizing the first five books of, of Genesis, if not the whole book. I'm talking about memorizing the things that God said in his words, uh, not just a handful of verses so you can check off the box and move along. I'm talking about this practice as a life choice, as a characteristic of Christians that know the word of God and believe it and are doing everything they can to uh, uh, to keep it. Life choice. Amen. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Well, how are you going to keep your mind stayed on God if you don't know his words? How are you going to do it? How are you going to, how are you going to keep your mind stayed on God if there's a whole book written about God and you never read it? And you don't know what the words say. And you can't remember what they are when you go talk to someone about it. You 
to memorize the Word of God so your mind can be transformed. Amen? Secondly, uh, turn to Matthew 22. Matthew 22. <clears throat> We're going to look down to verse 37. <coughs> Excuse me. Matthew 22. Look down at verse 30, 37. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, all of the law and the prophets, that's the books of Moses, uh, the books of history, the books of wisdom, the, and the prophets, major and minor, all of the books from Genesis to Malachi, which are in a different order in the Hebrew Bible, but I'm preaching to you out of the English Bible, amen. All the books from Genesis to Malachi, and further, the books from Matthew to Revelation, uh, hang and exist for the purpose of this commandment, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, with all thy mind. See, you're supposed to love the Lord with your, well, I, you know, some of you people, some of you are, you're always talking to me about people, friends that you know that are Catholic. Well, they just love the Lord. No, they don't. They love their idols. They love their false church that teaches lies. They love their symbols and their, and their statues and their high ceilings. They love their light, uh, which they call, uh, their physical light that comes in through the windows of their cathedrals. They love their money and their prosperity. They love their organization and their hierarchy. And though they won't admit it, they even love their sex perversion among the priests, which is why they defend it. They love those things. And if they, and if they didn't, they'd leave it. They'd leave it. Uh, mystery. The mystery uh, of Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations in the earth. And you preachers, you should be preaching against the Catholic Church every chance you get. It's one of the things that you're charged as a steward with keeping. Uh, the fact that the Catholic Church is evil and that it will be destroyed by uh, by by Jesus Christ in, in Revelation 17 and 18. And the, an entire chapter is devoted in, in this book uh, to rejoicing over its destruction. Uh, Catholicism is wicked and evil. And you're supposed to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. But one of the reasons why you, one of the ways in which I know that you don't, uh, and that I don't when, the, when it's true that I'm not, is that the Bible says, if a man love me, he will keep my words. See? Why do you think he said it that way? He said it that way because keeping his words, that is to say, memorizing them, but more than memorizing them, memorizing them, and applying them, learning them, believing them, living them out in your day-to-day -day life, hour by hour, is a characteristic of people that keep this commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. So Jesus Christ just said it plainly, if a man love me, he will keep my words. John 14, 23. John 14, 23. Now see that, with and with thy mind... All right, turn to Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. And look down in verse uh, 30. Mark chapter 12 and verse 30. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. So everybody in the earth, the world, they all preach this uh, second commandment, love his neighbor as himself, and they completely disregard the first commandment. And because Christians have not memorized scripture, it's a lost art in fundamental churches, as Dr. Ruckman said. Uh, it's a lost art. People don't generally memorize books of the Bible today. They might memorize a verse here and here, here and there, but they don't memorize books and so they don't, they forget, they forget the first commandment, which is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. You say, well, I just can't memorize the Bible. It's just too hard for me. I'm just not skilled. I'm not naturally talented at it. Well, 
did you love the Lord with all your mind and with all your strength? Did you put every ounce of your of your heart and soul of effort into it? Did you sacrifice your time and your energy to memorize the Word of God? No, you did every other thing that you thought should be done before the Word of God. If a man love me, he will keep my words. Turn to Luke. Turn to the book of Luke. Luke. You're so consumed by the cares of this world, or by any cares, uh, spiritual or otherwise, uh, that you forgot the first commandment, which is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. Uh, Luke 10 and verse uh, 27. And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. See? You're supposed to devote everything that you are and that you have uh, to loving the Lord God. And you say, well, I do. You say that you do because you're defining love as just your emotions, the way you feel about something. But the Bible defines it as action. Uh, you're supposed to demonstrate your, the way that you feel uh, by by proving it, by showing it, by demonstrating it, by 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 presenting your body as a living sacrifice to God, which is your reasonable service. By not being conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is a function of your love for God. See, say, well, I can see, you know, that you're supposed to love God and. And all that thing, but why is Bible memory? I mean, I don't teach you as a life choice. Like you have to be in some kind of program or something. I mean, as long as I'm memorizing scripture somewhere, yeah, you know, I'm trying to be gracious to you. I've tried to be gracious uh, to folks and say, you know, you just do the best you can, and as long as you're doing some, that's better than none. But that is not the teaching of the Bible. Not that I shouldn't be gracious, but what you should be is is uh, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. To turn to, and so there's three times Jesus said in the Gospels what the first and great commandment was, the main commandment, the real, the actual thing that you're supposed to be doing. Uh, turn to Deuteronomy six. <coughs> Deuteronomy six, and look down in verse uh, four. Actually, start in verse 3. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with thee, and that ye may increase mightily, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath promised thee in the land that floweth with milk and honey. So that's a promise to Israel. And uh, these commandments, obedience to these commandments, condition whether or not uh, Israel uh, got these promises, that it's well with them, that they increase mightily, and that they dwell in the land flowing with milk and honey. Verse 4, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So all your heart, that's your emotions, all your soul, that's everything that you are, all your might, that's all your effort. And in the New Testament, uh, Jesus amplifies that and says all your mind and all your strength. And look at verse 6. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. Which is a direct cross-reference to Psalm 119, verse 11, which says, Thy word have I hidden in my heart, the hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Which means that memorizing the word of God, and not just that, and thou shalt teach them to thy, diligently unto thy children, and, not, and that doesn't stop when they grow up and get married. Amen. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the posts of thy house and on thy gates. But before all of those things, verse 6, in these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Say, Brother Jeff, what are you talking about? I'm talking about adopting the practice of daily consistent memorization of the New Testament as a life choice commanded for all Christians, not only because it is the mechanism by which your mind is renewed uh, in conjunction with the Holy Spirit of God who teaches you these words as you learn them, 
but also it is the stated uh, means of you uh, showing your your love for the, for God, which is why Jesus said in John fourteen twenty three, "If a man love me, he will keep my words." See. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, with all thy might. And you might just as well say, memorize the word of God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, with all thy might. You say, well, I just, you know, it's too tedious. I don't just like memorizing a whole chapter. Well, the only way you're going to get what the chapter says and remember it from day to day to be able to apply it to the way that you live your life is to memorize a chapter and not forget it. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So if you're going to be in obedience to that verse, you show me the word of the New Testament that's not spoken by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Every one of the, the books of uh, uh, the New Testament were written by an apostle. Uh, not all of the twelve, but of the apostles. Amen. This is a means, this is the primary means of putting these things into practice. And that's how I've always taught it. Now, um, everybody always makes a big deal about, well, you just memorize scripture and you want everybody to know how smart you are and you might, you have a natural talent for it. No, let me tell you something. People with natural, who are naturally talented at memorizing scripture or remembering things tend to slack off because they're not loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength, with all thy might. They're try they're just getting by on what they can get away with because they can, because they're smart, and they don't have to work as hard to produce the same result as you. But don't forget, friend, the Bible says, Unto whom much is given, much is required. So if you're naturally talented at Bible memory, then you better not come to me after three years and not have the New Testament memorized. Or whatever the corresponding amount is according to your proportion of grace and faith that God's given you. Say, well, I'm trying, but the devil's fighting me. Well, then fight back. Amen. Fight the good fight of faith. The Bible says. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Uh, the Bible says in Peter. I'm talking about Bible memorization as a life choice. Not just something that you do uh, for a period of your life because you're in school. I uh, don't think that the 64 verses that you had to memorize for doctrines class at Trinity Baptist College are sufficient to get you through the Christian life until you die. They're not even sufficient to lead you into a good doctrine. See? And you got to be careful for just memorizing individual verses too because what happens is, what happens is people take a verse here, a verse there out of context and they wrongly apply them and they pervert the scripture that way. And I'm not saying you can't memorize an individual verse and rightly divide it. You can and you should. Amen. But it's harder to pervert it if you memorize the whole chapter. Because you know the context and you remember it. But the reason why you don't, one of the reasons why people don't, uh, number one, they don't want to put the work in. They're lazy. Number two, they're naturally talented and think they can get away with not putting the work in uh, and just skimming by and what they have. No, the Bible, the Bible in the first and great commandment never one time mentioned what your talent is or what your natural ability is. It re what it requires is all your soul, all your heart, all your mind, all your strength, all your might. Is that what you've given to the word of God? Before you tell me that you just can't do it and you don't have time to do it? Is that what you've done? Every time you choose to do something else instead of this, and myself included, I'm, by the way, myself is included in all my preaching of things that I preach against because I'm the same as you. I'm not, I don't have any, I'm a sinner just like you and I gotta be right with God just like you. And I gotta repent every time I do wrong just like you and I gotta rise again every time I fall just like every uh, other saved man. And I got to confess my sins to Jesus Christ day after day, night after night. Uh, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner, not because I'm worried about my soul, because there's no fear in love, and I don't, I don't I'll never have to worry about going to hell again, but because I'm worried about the punishment that I will reap in my flesh, 
uh, for disobeying God, for not doing what I know to do, unto whom much is given, much is required. And I know uh, there are elements and people in your life that resist, but you have to fight. You have to fight. You have to keep fighting. You have to maintain. You have to do right. You have to do good. And putting up your Bible is not good. Amen. And uh, you should do this if you have the opportunity, if there's some kind of a class or a program if, uh, available to you, then you should get involved with it. And if you're anywhere connected with me or this church, then you have the ability uh, to be in a program to memorize uh, the, the Pawn Epistles in three years. And any one of you can do it. Now, that's not to say that every one of you will do it, but you can. Now judge yourselves. Why don't you? Be honest about your reasons. Why don't you? Why do you hate the Word of God? Why won't you read it? You take a shower every day because you like to be clean. I have grilled cheese sandwiches every Saturday because I like grilled cheese sandwiches. I go to work every day because I love money. Actually, I need money to, you know, as I'm commanded to work. Um, but actually, I don't need money. And God forgive me if I ever love money. But you ought to love this book more than any one of those things. And this book is more important than any one of those things. Why don't you memorize it? Why don't you memorize it? Why don't you let it change your mind? Why don't you use it to help keep you from sin by hiding it in your heart so you remember what they say and can think about the, the riches of the knowledge of it. Uh, open thou mine eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law, the Bible says in Psalm 119. Why don't you let it feed you? Why don't you let it cause you to grow? Why don't you let it change you? Why don't you uh, receive... Uh, the reproach that it will cause among your friends and family when you start believing it and quoting it. The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And let the reproaches of them that reproach thee fall on me, Jesus said. You go ahead and let everybody that hates you, let them hate me. Because I'm so zealous for this house. I want to be a part of the sufferings of Jesus Christ. Not to imitate them and fake them but just to follow. Just to follow. Bible memory as a life choice. As a means of activating the Christian life. Of putting into practice the things that you remember that the Bible says. Of connecting your life and the things that you practice with the words on the page. Let your life be a practical application of what the Bible says. And the thing that connects those two things is you remembering them. Of, of you putting yourself in remembrance of them. Of you memorizing them. Of hiding them in their heart. Of hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now that is an added fellowship that Jesus Christ promises to people that keep his words. Which is different than keeping his commandments. That is not available to people that don't hide God's word in their heart. Fellowship, added, additional, closer fellowship. I have meat to eat that you know not of. Say, so what are you talking about? I'm talking about making Bible memory uh, one of the chief aims of your life. And not Jack Van Impey, so you can just get up there and quote the Bible and not understand it. And not some joker who can get up and quote a chapter of Scripture in church who doesn't understand it or doesn't believe it. I'm talking about 
an immersive Christian experience. Forgive my New Agey sound. I'm talking about actually practicing the things that the Bible says. Um, you say, well, I've read the Bible. I just don't see those things. Because you didn't obey them. You know, you have to get on the conveyor belt. You have to take steps. You have to walk. You have to go down to the store and buy a Bible. You have to read it. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Well, I just don't have peace. So that verse isn't true. It's because your mind isn't stayed on, uh, on God. You're thinking about every other thing in the world. You're thinking about your insecurities and your fears. You're thinking about your friends and your family. You're thinking about your TV show that you watch. You're thinking about your, uh, you know, your job. You're thinking about every other thing in the world. Which, by the way, is the exact tactic and will of Satan. To get you to think of any other thing. So the way to fight that is to make this the main thing that you think about. And the way to do that is to hide God's word in, in your heart, to memorize them, to keep them, to hold them fast, to remember them, to put yourself in remembrance of them, to be mindful of them. Bible memory as a life choice. Now, I know a lot of several people listen to these messages and uh you know you're not all don't all show up for church i wish you would and i pray that you would uh come to church but whether you do or not you can be part you can you i can show you how to memorize the bible and uh, everybody that's followed the instructions has had 100 percent success now some people haven't had success and that's because they don't follow the instructions but if you're um just a normal person, um, you know, anywhere from age 5 to age 105, you can memorize the Bible. Um, and uh, we'll talk in future lessons about how to go about doing that. And um, But please call me or, or write me or get in touch with me, and I will help you. Uh, I will show you how you can put the... Uh, rubber to the road um, uh, to learn the Word of God and hide it in your heart and remember it. Amen? Alright. Dear God, we thank you so much for your many blessings. I thank you for Jesus Christ and the precious blood that he shed. I thank you for your words. Please help us to memorize them and be faithful in doing that and help us to reap the fruit of doing that uh, in the right spirit and the right way. It's in Jesus Christ's name that I pray these things. Amen.